Yuck. But again, I passed out and I managed to get a job in Microsoft Corporation. Now, people would say, Microsoft, oh my God, that's uh, one of the leading organizations in the world and you're lucky. But I wasn't that ecstatic, okay? Because I was, I was asked to sell software solutions in the techno-commercial space and uh, I wasn't really happy about my job. Because I wasn't happy, I would wake up uh, on, on a Monday morning, that's when the weekend would begin, and I would say, oh my God, not another week, okay? And my energy would continuously dwindle uh, through the day, and by 3, 4 o'clock, I would, I would be looking at the watch, ready for a chance to run out. Now, because I didn't like my job, naturally, I didn't learn anything, I, I didn't improvise, I didn't improve myself. So do you think people like that will succeed? I don't think so. Because if you have to succeed in your career, you have to be within the top 1 to 2%. And, uh, and absolutely, you should be doing at least one or two things better than the rest of the world. So I was stagnating in my career. And I'm not the only one. There's an international survey that says almost 60% of people are not happy with the jobs that they're doing. And if given a chance, they would go back and choose a different job or a different career altogether. Now, that's staggering. 60% of people are not happy with their jobs. And that's when divine intervention came in. I was lucky. I got involved with a couple of social organizations and they asked me to train. And when I started training children, training parents and teachers, I realized that I finally found my calling. And I was absolutely happy with what I was doing. And I started learning. I started downloading books from the internet. I started uh, 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 watching videos. I improvised. I improved. And I started doing it better than the rest of the people around. And uh, that's when uh, a new career opportunity came my way. I heard of an opening in a bank uh, for a trainer and I decided to take it. And that's when people said, hey, Sangeet, are you crazy? You're an engineer with an MBA and you're going to teach in a bank. But I remember this line from the movie Braveheart. Uh, Your heart is free. Just have the courage to follow it. And I'm so happy that I followed it. Uh, uh, I don't feel as if I'm working right now. I wake up in the morning. Uh, at the beginning of a week and I say, wow, let me go to work. And at the end of the day, you'll have to drag me out of work. And I come back home more refreshed and more energized than ever. And because I love my job, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm currently within the senior management space and I don't feel that I'm working at all. But brothers and sisters, six years, six years, four years for my engineering and two years for my MBA. If you ask me, have I wasted it? I wouldn't say I wasted it, but what I've done in these six years have no bearing absolutely on what I'm doing right now. So it's, it's very, very, very important to choose the right career that fits you like a glove. You don't, you don't want to end up as a square peg in a round hole. You want to be both happy and successful in your career. So this is why we're going to discuss this topic today, how to choose the right career for your child. Luckily, Parents have moved on. Uh, uh, you know, previously parents used to choose career based on three, four considerations. My grandfather wanted to be an IS officer. My father wanted to be an IS officer. None of them made it. So um, I want my son to be an IS officer. Or uh, another cliche is neighbors envy owner's pride. Susan uncle's daughter is going for medicine. So I want my daughter to go for medicine. Uh, 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 John uncle's son is going for uh, chemical engineering. So I want my son to go for chemical engineering. Or they go around asking people, what is the new trend? Is it nanotechnology? Is it biochemistry? And they make sure that their children are put into uh, careers that suit these trends without checking as to whether it suits them uh, uh, at all. But luckily, things have changed. Parents have now started to look out for career counselors, looking out for aptitude testing. So these episodes will definitely help you. Because the topic is important, we're going to devote the next three episodes for the topic. Today, we're going to have an introduction about choosing the right career. We're going to discuss about aptitude testing. And I've got a very delightful person in the studio with me. I'll introduce her in a few minutes. And uh, in the next episode, we'll look at personality-based career choice. We'll look at tools like MBTI, the self-directed search. And in the final episode, we'll bring in uh, the latest uh, concept in career searching, which is conversational research. I don't want to break the surprise now. You'll see it when you watch it uh, in, the, in the third episode from today. And I'll also talk about LinkedIn, how this powerful uh, uh, social networking tool for professionals can be used by your children 
to find the right career for them. So uh, be with us, not just today, but in the next uh, three episodes and more as we explore this very important topic of choosing the right career for our child. Now, after uh, you release a small video clip, I, I, I would, we would play a small video clip now. I would like to bring in our guest, Mrs. Sudha Srivalsan, who is a dear friend and somebody who has got umpteen years of experience working with students. She's a career counselor working with uh, our own English high school, Dubai. But before we bring her in, I would like you to sit back and watch a small video clip. If I had to ask you, are you happy in your career? What would you answer? No, not the answer that you've so many times tried to convince yourself of, that you're happy and that you enjoy what you're doing. I'm looking for a true answer. What does your heart say? Are you happy with your career? A little more difficult to truthfully answer this question, isn't it? There's so much writing on this answer. My family, my career, my life. Research into career development have indicated that a large majority of individuals are unhappy with who they are because they're unhappy with what they do. Many feel like their life is out of balance, like the car towers they so carefully constructed are falling apart. Many people go home at night after a long stressful day at work and struggle to make the transition from their worker role to that of mother, father, partner and friend. Welcome back and I have Mrs. Sudha Srivalsan with me. Ma'am, uh, thanks a lot uh, it's a uh, for be. being with us. Our association goes a long way. Merry be, Christmas yeah. to you and your family. And, you, uh, and we look forward to having a very meaningful discussion with you. For the sake of uh, those who do not know you yet, yes. could you kindly introduce yourself in a little more detail? Good evening. Uh, I am Sudha Srivalsan. I am the counsellor by profession. I am a trained counsellor and uh, I have been working uh, in this field for the past 20 years. Uh, I have had the opportunity of working in some of the finest schools in India okay. and Bahrain before moving into Dubai 10 years ago. Okay. I am right now with GEMS group of schools okay. and I love my profession, mm -hmm. I love working with children okay. and young adults. Somebody who has been in this profession for 20 years, dear viewers, be ready to lap it all up. We have to make sure that we get maximum value out of this session. Ma'am, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of parents and a lot of students who are anxious about the careers that they should choose when they pass out. Currently, what methods uh, are deployed to help students find appropriate careers? Okay. Uh, currently, uh, there are a number of career assessment tools okay. available in the market. Mm -hmm. I call it market. Okay. Uh, we do have some uh, career assessment tests measure the aptitude of the students. Okay. Some measure uh, the identify the strength of the students, like okay. their interests, okay. their skills, okay. and some based on their personality assessment. Okay. Uh, so the best uh, career assessment tool would be the combination of all these things. Okay. And uh, we do have uh, tests like uh, differential aptitude test, okay. which cater to the aptitude of the child. Okay. We do have uh, SDS, that okay. is self-directed search. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, tests like uh, interest inventory. Okay. And we do have something called as IDEAS, okay. uh, which is called as uh, interest exploration and assessment system, okay. uh, which used to identify the strength of the students. Okay. And based on that, uh, we can advise the students true, what true. their profession could be. So as ma'am says, there are umpteen tools that I absolutely love the way she used the word market out there. Uh, nothing against uh, uh, professional kind of, yeah. uh, organizations, but then... Uh, let me share a personal example, ma'am. Previously, when, when we were young, our parents had the dilemma of choosing between medicine and engineering. Uh, uh, in the last couple of years, I've attended at least five or six career exhibitions and presentations where a counsellor comes in and opens the Pandora's box and says, uh, under the medical stream, you have 250 career choices. Under the engineering stream, you have 600 choices. And parents who come in as confused ones end up going back even more, more confused. confused yeah. So, so they're actually uh, not really helping parents narrow down the search. 
they're, they're making them bewildered, uh, uh, which uh, is really not a good thing. So I think, yes, we have to be conscious of, of the market out there. But as ma'am said, there are a lot of uh, lovely tools. Uh, uh, I noticed that uh, you used the word aptitude a couple of times, ma'am. Uh, could you kindly elaborate for our viewers, what exactly is, not the interest part, not the okay. SDS, what exactly is aptitude testing? Okay. Uh, basically, aptitude testing is an instrument okay. that measures the ability of a okay. uh, person in a particular skill. Okay. Okay. Either with future training, okay. the person can acquire that skill. Okay. Okay. When you say skill, are we talking about something technical here? It can be specific regarding technical uh, skills like mechanical ability okay. or uh, numerical ability okay. or you can say clerical aptitude. Oh, really? Or okay. it could be a generalized one like uh, spatial ability okay. or linguistic aptitude. So, these are all broad based okay. and there are specific things like as I told you earlier mechanical ability or that caters to the needs of the particular uh, skill. Okay. And, and how are these tests like ma'am? What kind of questions are asked typically? It is basically um, yes or no type of questions. Okay or uh, you like it or dislike that kind of a question okay. or in some places you have to choose the best answer. Oh really? And a, B, C, D will be there. Okay. It's just like any of your aptitude test what you are going in for any kind of a job interview or something. Okay, okay. And, and the kind of questions that are usually asked are probably in terms of logic you have a number sequence yeah. and you need yeah. to or probably they show you some shapes and shapes then they ask and you. what comes next. Okay. Uh, what okay. is the progress like? Oh, okay. Ma'am, uh, this is really from your experience, um, these kind of tests and the results that come out, do they really help you in career selection? Uh, to be very frank, uh, it will not uh, give you the exact career, okay. but it will give you a uh, guidance. Okay. Uh, it will provide you a direction. Okay. Okay. Uh, at 16, 17 years, you are not able to identify what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. True, true. So, this kind of aptitude test will give you that kind of an edge towards okay. identifying okay. your weakness and okay. your strength. Okay. And depending on those uh, results, okay. you can choose your educational and career choices. Oh, okay. And sometimes the results will be like you would not have decided, you would not have even thought about those careers. Oh, really? Okay. So, sometimes that will help you to further your uh, choices. Okay, okay. Further Pro explore your choices. Okay, probably give you more insights that, that you never had initially. initially. You might have thought uh, 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 my options are A and B, but then yeah. if you do an aptitude test, they might come back and see if your options yeah. C, C and D. Yeah. And, and yeah. E and on. Ma'am, um, having, uh, because as part of the social organization, uh, um, I had the opportunity to, to facilitate some uh, career development tests. My concern was answering questions on math and logic, tough questions in fact, uh, extremely um, uh, challenging questions within a short time span. Uh, how does it really help, you know, scientifically, how does it really help to, to ascertain somebody's uh, uh, career uh, aptitude? That is a very lovely question, Sangeet. Okay. Uh, the thing is, uh, basically, these are all time bound questions. Okay. And if you take into account the what I mentioned about that, that is okay. differential aptitude test. Okay. It is uh, conducted in a uh, environment where exams like an environment. Okay. So, the students are already tensed. Okay. And at least in exams, you know the set of questions what you are going to answer. Okay. Here, you are not, you are not able to prepare anything. Oh, really? You cannot okay. prepare. Okay. So, you have to just go and write it. So, okay. it is two and a half hours time bound okay. students are under pressure okay. and uh, very few students complete the entire uh, session okay uh, so it can uh, i won't say it is a it, it there can be errors in that okay okay because ma'am um, i tried uh, uh, doing um, a couple of uh, sheets not the entire test and i found the questions to be extremely challenging you know you can't sit back on an armchair and answer them you have to use your capa brain capacity to the fullest, Perfect. be focused and especially with this new generation where attention spans are less and uh, uh, it's very tough to get them to focus. What I found is they answer the first few questions correctly and then they start randomly answering. And it keeps getting uh, difficult. As you, go yeah, along. as you go along. Okay, it keeps okay, uh, okay. So, my, my concern is uh, um, I think students will have to be really briefed on the necessity to do it properly because parents go and invest in such a tool and they rely on the counsellor and then uh, you get a, an answer sheet that is weird uh, because the child has not really uh, looked That's into it properly. Yeah. 
So, so and that's the concern. And various factors goes into it, like the student's uh, mood, okay. uh, the physical condition of the student, okay. and uh, all uh, all these components get get into that. True, true. I remember what we used to do is uh, uh, we used to every. Uh, uh, one hour or so we used to take a break, break yeah. take the students outside and make sure that they do some activity so that okay. it was a kind of you know a, a refresher for them to go back and try the challenges again. So I, I think what ma'am is saying is yes uh, um, it, it is useful because these examinations are used worldwide uh, created after a lot of research tested on a lot of people and they do help you in, in, in giving you some indications of the apt career for you. But then it depends on the student's mood, mm, yeah. it depends on how seriously he or she takes it, uh, depends on how well he is briefed. So uh, parents, please note it's just not enough to make sure that you sign up for an aptitude test and you send your child to do that. A lot of homework has to be done. You have to know what it is all about. You have to brief your child, sit with the counsellor and understand it. You need to be prepared it. for the test. E exactly. Make sure that it is done appropriately. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, now this is a very personal question. Uh, aptitude testing is all about skills. You said mechanical skills, you said linguistic skills, you said mathematical skills. But from my experience in the industry, uh, having worked in the corporate space, I know for certain that 80% of managers who are fired from their jobs are not fired because they don't have technical skills. They might be extremely good engineers, extremely good uh, strategic planners, extremely good accountants. But they are fired because they cannot get along with others, because, because they cannot work in a team, because they cannot motivate and inspire. Now, some jobs require more competence in these areas than the others. Uh, how can an aptitude test help in this? Because you're basically measuring someone's skill alone. So isn't that a huge gap? As I told you earlier, Sangeet, aptitude is only one small fraction of a part okay. in your career assessment. Okay. Uh, it should go along with your interest, okay. personality, okay. your values. What do you value in your life? Okay. Okay. These okay. are the other components that should go along with your aptitude. Okay. Aptitude test uh, by itself will not give you a proper okay. career. Okay. I think uh, ma since ma'am mentioned values, uh, I, I would like to talk about two of my very good friends who did uh, engineering with me. Uh, both of them were extremely competent. Uh, both of them passed out with very high scores. And uh, uh, one of them wanted to work for the UN because his personal value was to uh, work for the society. society. And, and he ended up uh, 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 working in Africa with underprivileged children. So was engineering the right career for him? I, I really do not know. So I think it's so important to know about values. Value. I think we've got a caller uh, on air. So uh, would like to bring the caller in, please. Hello. Hello, hi. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, my name is Mohammed. Yes, Mr. Mohammed. I would like to know about this aptitude test. Okay. Which uh, uh, my son is in uh, 11th standard. Okay. And uh, he, we want, uh, how can we attend for this aptitude test? Where, where we have to register for this and how? How oh. can I... Uh, uh, okay, okay. I, I think, Mr. Mohammed, your question would be to suggest a good aptitude test and explain as to how your child can avail it, right? Is that your question? True, true. Because we, want, we want him to write this, uh, this exam. Sure, so okay. So, I okay. want to know where I can... Uh, where, where you can avail yeah. one. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sir, your uh, son's school might be able to help you in this regard. You can approach the career counsellor of the school and they would be able to uh, give you exact uh, place where you can do it or sometimes the school they themselves might be offering these kind of uh, services. Uh, you can just uh, request your the school counsellor to help you in this regard sir. Okay, great, fine, that's fine. Thank you. All right. I hope you answered okay. your question sir. Thank you for calling. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine, that's fine. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for so calling, much. thank you for calling. Ma'am, you, you were mentioning about interests and uh, uh, and values and personality. Are you saying there are other tests that can that can uh, give guidance in these areas? Yeah, values, I mean personality, of course, there are tests. Okay. Interest also, there are tests too. Okay. As I told you earlier, SDS, 
self directed search okay it is a combination of your personality and your interest okay basically it is based on holland's riasek oh, theory okay okay r i a s realistic and okay. yeah, realistic okay. investigative okay. Okay. there will be about 128 uh, aspects will Questions. be there and okay. you, everything is divided into 16 sure. parts okay which will be based on the six type of careers okay and these careers will be your personality also okay so that along with your aptitude test okay. should be able to give you a direction uh, i think parents please note it's just not enough uh, and, and especially to mr mohammed who called uh, you know it's not enough to send your child for one aptitude test and to hear the counselor's version of the right uh, uh, career right, for yeah. your child because it is a complicated subject uh, you don't want your child to be in the 60 percent who says i'm not happy with my career i want i want to, i want i want to change so we have to administer multiple tests you know you could start with an aptitude yeah. test take uh, an inventory of uh, the the child's skills and see which careers suit the person more i'm sure if i'd done uh, my aptitude test when i was young i would have scored very poorly in the mathematical space but i would have done well in the linguistic space and uh, uh, if i'd done it maybe i would have done a career in in journalism or something different uh so but but that is not enough you then have to look at your personality type then you have to look at your interests and then you have to look at your values we'll explain all these in detail as we go through the session uh but uh, uh, as ma'am said uh, we parents will have to play a very proactive role we have to meet the counselor regularly correct, yeah. and make sure that we arrive at the right career it's not a yes or no answer it's not a left or right answer multiple options are there and we need to arrive at the right one i think it would be time for us to take a short break and and after we take uh, this break uh, we'll have an uh, um, um, an online conversation with dr sunaina who has actually done a phd on the topic uh, uh, of career success of cbsc students in the uae so it's now time for a short break don't go away meet us at the other end of the break